Hey everyone, this is David Trutchell with Wallfacer Design. Uh, today is August 2nd. Today we're going to do a little bit of work on the Mica Sunglasses project. I'm just going to show you uh, the current glasses generator system that I just finished up. Um, there's still a little more work to be done. There's no arms. Uh, and that module for the actual arm construction isn't quite done yet, but this is pretty close to done, so I'm going to do a walkthrough and maybe an updated one later on. So, essentially, after the third prototype, there are a lot of mistakes that need to be corrected, and I wanted to create a more variable system where you could just give it a bunch of variables and constraints, and then you could choose various options and automatically configure a frame for you. So I found out the averages for a typical lens width, and for the typical bridge width, you know, lens height. And then I figured out all the constraints for my expected manufacturing method and also taking into account my material limitations. Um, and I create a system completely from that. So there's a design document um, that will be shared. That goes through a lot of those, um, you know, criteria that I was building the system with. And um, also explain some interactions between them. And, you know, my sources were just typical websites, um, did a little extra like reading, um, but yeah, I'm just borrowing out the old dimensions in this case. And then I also want to consider like the constraints of the actual mica sheets. So we have like 50 by 75 millimeters for each lens, potentially at most. Um, and then, yeah, I'm planning on 3D printing these out of metal using a sintering technique that they do in post-processing. And there are a lot of weird requirements for that. So I went into those details and account for those as well. You can check out the details as usual and the newest files, um, including a dependency file. Uh, so you can see the actual Micah sunglasses generator here. So we're we'll going going over in a minute. And then, yeah, the dependency file, this is for the hinge. There isn't a hinge building module yet. Um, either way, this is the fun part. We're off into CAD world. Um, so this is what the document looks like. Uh, this is in Rhino 6. And we're running Grasshopper within that. And that's what's actually generating all of this geometry. None of this is real. This is just the display output of a program. This is our program, the graphical programming language, so Grasshopper is. Um, essentially, we have a bunch of modules that I've created that do everything from, you know, create the mica sheet. So this is our 50 by 75 millimeter mica sheet uh, to determining the lens shape. And this also allows you to modify the lens shape here. And then eventually that lens shape gets transferred over and referenced to actually build a three-dimensional model, meaning that if we modify the location of any of these points, it'll modify this model. However, it is memory intensive to do so. I'm recording this video live right now, so we'll play with some other variables, not that one, cause this problem. Project everything is based off of the lens, so if we change that one variable, everything else uh, ends up wiggling around and it's not very pretty. Uh, we also have, you know, just like useful tools, uh, guidelines, um, which allow you to choose between the average temple sizes. So it scales from 120 millimeters to 150. Um, there's some interactions I need to finish programming in here. But this helps you figure out how wide you should be making the frame as a designer. So hopefully it's a lot more intuitive. So there's upper and um, you know, lower bounds on these systems. And then there's also ways to move the actual lens spacing. So right now, these lenses are spaced something like 41. But let's say we want to change that to, um, we can say 46. We just hit enter, give it a second. This model update, and that would be for like a different face size. Oh, there we go. You're right. That's obviously the wrong direction. So maybe I was supposed to be going 52. 
But obviously, I need to change the upper bounds to so that, that doesn't happen. So let's try that again. So, anyway, this is very memory intensive. But it works. And this also means that, you know, pressure can be handled with file and generate a pair of, you know, glasses. And then output of that, this program is printable. You know, we can go and we can 3D print it from there. Or we could, uh, with some modifications, something like this is very easily, you know, injection molded or print any other process, honestly. And we could change these variables so that it works or plays nicely with a particular manufacturing system by obeying minimal materials, maximum materials, you know, making sure that um, if it needs to have like fillets, you know, rounded corners, ensuring that it has compliance for that. We can build a module for just about anything to ensure that. And we also have one that controls um, like the nose pad, you know, so it draws the nose pad and eventually it extrudes it to create this form here. And it even chooses where to place it. So that's um, right now independent feature. You could make it so that's tied intrinsically to some other dimension or point on another reference object. That way they stay linked together, something like that. But for right now, everything's kind of full custom. You have to do a lot of wiggling, but it does work metrically down the center. So if you modify one side, it will modify the other. So you're actually only modifying one side at any point. Um, this section over here, this nose bridge module, does just that, controls the nose bridge, and the depth and shape of the extrusion. So in this case, we're extruding along the Y and Z axis to get that kind of angled profile. And obviously these nose pads need to be moved down quite a bit. So now we even can just see that. We want to go and we'll say this needs to be moved down quite a bit. So let's say negative, um, and that's for the actual extrusion. To move it, we need to go here. We'll just slide these down. You can see how this parameter is changing. And that looks about right. Um, obviously, these no the nose pad shape could use some changing. So let's do that. Um, well, to change the nose pad shape, we'll just go over here. And it's going to be these points. So we'll zoom in here and check out how this, you know, so obviously this isn't very pretty right now, but I can move this point and you'll see the model start to update. So we're going to start sculpting this into an actual um, like nose kind of support structure. And turn this more into an arc. So it'll hug the nose. So here we are designing That looks bring this edge in there's no need for it to be going out that far probably have too many points here honestly you know we're just making things annoying yeah, so i'm doing some bad things here and this is what you change back yeah this is kind of scary whenever you get into this kind of modeling I got too many things hanging around. Okay, so this is acting as a control point there. Okay, so that's viable. And then we can start pinching 9 and 10 to get that arc. And we can create a separate cutting profile later, which would then, you know, trim the that's obviously way too far out too. So there we go. It's a little better, more reasonable. Negative four. And go back here. We won't say we want to 
change this, but ultimately we want to cut this probably. So we'll do that all in like post processing. We could create a module for that, but not every model is going to follow the same rules. And so um, that's kind of like a custom module that someone might want to build. And there's all sorts of things like, yeah, where do you place the arm hinges? Um, so that way, you know, they always are um, at the proper width. That way the arms aren't pinching your head too much or anything like that. And then this separate little box here, this is just used to fill the gap in between the hinge and the actual frame. Um, and then there's some, you know, things like this final, obviously there's a memory hog, I labeled, we want to look good here for the demo. But um, this just mirrors that geometry that it flips on the both sides. And then we have output, you know, so you would just be able to select this. You would say, take, and then these are now real objects that can be dimensioned and can be sent to a 3D printer for usage there or evaluated for manufacturing and other processes. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty interesting system. Um, but I hope that people find it somewhat flexible and maybe even fun. Um, right now, the lenses come in from the front of the frame. Obviously, the way the system is designed, you could just invert those values here, and then you could create a traditional frame. I'm only doing this because I'm soldering the, the, front, the lenses into the frame. Um, so, there you go. I think that's a pretty sufficient tour of this entire system. Um, I hope that you check out the Hackaday page. And again, if you look up Mica sunglasses or just wall facer design, it's probably pretty easy to find at this point. So, um, okay, I hope you enjoy that.